American Laser Games was founded in the late 1980s and were based in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Initially, the company was known as ICAT, which stands for the Institute for Combat Arms and Tactics, and manufactured laser disc based training simulations for police forces. This technology was then later adapted by them for use in the arcades. Now, American Laser Games was not the first company to use laser discs as a medium for an arcade machine. Far from it. Sega, in fact, were believed to be the first company to do so with 1983's Astron Belt, and most famously, Cinematronics with their series of Don Bluth directed titles. These were a huge hit in the early 80s, with Dragon's Lair and Space Ace in particular being fondly remembered and re released right up until this day. In 1990, American Laser Games released Mad Dog McCree into the arcades, and it proved to be a smash hit. Like its predecessors, the gameplay was quite simple. Mad Dog McCree was a basic shooting gallery type game, where you faced down a number of Old West villains in your quest to defeat the titular Mad Dog McCree himself. The game's uncomplicated nature, being that you picked up a plastic gun and shot at the screen, a large eye-catching cabinet ensured it was an immediate success. Naturally, this success led to a number of follow-up titles from the company, including a direct sequel to Mad Dog McCree, imaginatively titled Mad Dog McCree 2, Space Pirates, which was the token sci-fi version, Crime Patrol, a nod back to the company's origins in police training simulations, and Who Shot Johnny Rock, which took the same basic gameplay and transposed it to a 1920s gangster setting. Now, inevitably, these games did receive ports to home systems, most notably the 3DO, which did see ports of the majority of the catalogue. Indeed, the 3DO was so popular and well supported by American Laser Games that they released an adapted version of the hardware as a low cost kit for arcade owners instead of utilising a bulky and expensive laser disc player. Sadly, this success could not continue and by late 1996 the company's revenues had collapsed and the company closed its doors, with its assets initially being sold to Her Interactive best known these days for producing the Nancy Drew series of games, before being sold on again to Digital Leisure, who now also own the rights to Dragon's Lair and Space Ace and keep republishing these interactive movies on a variety of formats. So, with that brief history lesson over, let's have a look at some of American Laser Games 3DO ports, starting with Mad Dog McCree. <coughs> Okay, so here's my Dog McCree. As you can see, I'm using the Project Phoenix emulator simply because I don't have access to a CRT TV and a light gun to be able to play these games properly and capture the footage. And here we are, Mad Dog McCree with its lovely little uh, American Laser Games logo. <coughs> here you can see the big hand in the middle of the screen there. That's because I had the joypad plugged in, which meant. The game thought I was using both a joypad and a light gun. You can also see that the calibration for the light gun compared to the mouse cursor is not quite 100%, which I'm not going to blame for the fact that I'm rubbish at this game, but, well, I'm rubbish at this game and I'm blaming that for it. <coughs> As you can see, it's a full screen, full motion video, and the quality is pretty good, to be fair. You know, you, you compare it to other CD-based systems at the time, such as the Mega CD, and it's it's definitely crisper and clearer. There was an MS-DOS version of this where I believe the video footage is of a roughly similar quality, but this is probably the best the game looked in the home market at the time. You can see from the attract sequence here how it is just a simple shooting gallery. There's not much going on. You can see just how badly out of sync the uh, calibration was there. It calibrates fine to the joypad, but I'm not trying to play this with a joypad. That would be a nightmare. But uh, let's have a little go here, going to the menu screens. It is slow to load. This isn't fast loading or anything. It's just sticking to the original way that the game would have loaded from the disc. And uh, here's the menu. 
massively out on the calibration as you can see I've tried to calibrate it and it just yeah it sucks but anyway a few more seconds of this and we'll actually get into the game now <coughs> There was a light gun available for this for the 3 ds I've previously mentioned. The light gun itself was in fact produced by American Laser Games. And it looked like a big old plastic western style six shooter. Which, you know, very similar to the Enforcer gun for the Lethal Enforcers games in fact. But uh, yeah, there was a version of this I believe for the Sega CD as well. Although it wasn't wonderfully well uh, received and didn't look brilliant but at least they tried yeah and I'm dead it's also Prospector although weirdly he will come back for the sequel which is odd oh never mind <coughs> try to reload the gun here some weird reason you have to click on the reload icon in this version when we get to the other games it's a simple usage of the secondary button that was on the gun to reload um, yeah, and yeah dead I suck but anyway let's move on now to Mad Dog McCree 2 now one thing you'll notice here in Mad Dog McCree 2 again still using the Project Phoenix emulator which I heartily recommend for anyone who wants to try out the 3DO but doesn't want to go to the expense of buying the increasingly pricey hardware. <coughs> um, one thing you will notice in this as I was about to say is that the calibration for this title seems to be a lot better. It's not perfect but for whatever reason the calibration of the light gun is significantly improved. Same little intro logo from uh, Mad Dog McCree reused here. Which I guess makes sense. And oh look, he's back. Even though he was seemingly shot and killed in the intro to the original, here he is. Anyway, he's back. He's rocking. Yeah. Now you get the little intro as you expect, a nice little track sequence. The video looks pretty similar to Mad Dog McCree 1. I'd say there's a small increase in the quality which you would expect given that this game was produced a bit later on. But beyond that, it's, it is what it is. It's a nice full screen, full motion video. Menu looks a lot nicer. Uh, this is just your little intro here where the Prospector dude has you <laughs> just getting some uh, target practice and getting your, getting your eye in. As you can see, I'm actually, with the calibration being better, I'm a fair bit uh, better at this. Although the hitboxes are somewhat uh, generous, shall we say. But uh, the jumping between the video clips is pretty well handled. You know, sometimes you would get pauses, like on, say, Night Trap on the Mega CD and the 3DO. There would be a distinct pause. They used a buzz of white noise to do that. And here, as you can see, it's, uh, it's a lot quicker, a lot smoother. But, yeah, dead. Now, on to the next one. And next up here, we have Drug Wars Crime Patrol 2 when it loads. Like I said, it's, it, it's not the fastest load. I believe the 3DO just had a single, had maybe a dual speed CD-ROM drive, so it's not the quickest to load up when you need it to. But anyway, here we go. Nice new logo here. There is a little bit of jerkiness here. This just seems to be this title. I'm not quite sure why because the other games seem to run perfectly fine but Drug Wars seems to run a little slower, a little jerky. Again you can select your levels here, you don't have to do the training option. Calibration is slightly off on this one as well um, and yeah I'm really rather rubbish at it. Sorry partner, you just don't... 
Like I said, I do, one thing I do like about these uh, American Lies games tiles is the little humorous vignettes that are years. filmed when you've been killed. It, it, it makes you want to get better. It also makes you want to get shot because you want to see what the hell they've got to say. Down here, we just go shooting like that. Now, um, Man. yeah, I am rubbish at these. My reflexes aren't brilliant. But, you know, with this one, I thought I'd give it a good go because I was getting used to the calibration on it after a few seconds. And again, the, the, the video footage looks great. The game plays pretty well. Ah. You're dead. That's not good, is it? It's it's yeah. These games are what these games are. So we'll move on to the final one that I have, which is uh, going to be Space Pirates. Now I'm going to be honest. Space Pirates is probably my favourite of these American Lies games releases that I have for the 3DO. Um, partly because I'm a massive sci-fi fan, and partly because I actually. I think it just plays that little bit better. They, they did a few things with this that you don't really get with the other ones, which is sad. As you can see, that one still says iCat on its copyright. This is Ursula Sky, which, you know, Commander of Colonial is Star interesting. This, I think this is the We're only one of the American Lays games that carries the iCat name as well. My ship has been overrun by the this one, this one seems to me Captain to be a bit more fun to play. They're beaming colonists aboard the Black Again, the video Dragon footage looks good. The, the quality is more than acceptable. Situation Although, leak. as with all the other games, Deflect the acting the is, frankly, Can't terrible. Hold out much longer. Yes. Please respond. Sub B movie standard. In fact, this is, this is the kind of stuff that would have looked bad on a direct video film from someone like a Charles Band. So, you know, it's, it's poor. Oh, galaxy. look! It's Captain this Tan guy again. He popped up in a lot of the American Laser Games towers. He seems to be an in-house guy almost. These now the calibration on this one the again is pretty off, but it seems to be easier to set itself in. Now this is something I do like about this compared to the Mad Dog McCree and Crime Patrol. You, the, the camera is moving, it's not just static. A little bit better at this. I have put a little bit more time in on this game. Uh, the transitions between the scenes are done nicely there with the uh, screen and doors closing as if you're going from room to room. And you can tell that, you know, as with the other games, you can tell they actually spent a reasonable amount of money on this. These games, yeah, they, they were not cheap to produce at all. Um, I will say now, while I just finished playing out this uh, Space Pirates footage, I couldn't find a copy of Who Shot Johnny Rock, so I've not got that to show you, but again, you know, it's, it's very similar to these. The video footage is of a similar quality. The gameplay is basically identical. And yeah, that's, that's really all I've got to say. You know, these games are what they are. This is Space Pirates. That was American Laser Games on the uh, 3DO. And I'm about to shoot an innocent civilian. Because I'm nasty like that. Yeah. Hey, Ranger, that was a colonist you just blasted. So there you have it, folks. That was American Laser Games on the 3DO. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do feel free to hit the like button. If you didn't, do hit the dislike button. It does work. Uh, if you've really enjoyed the content and want to see more of my stuff, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when I put a new video up. And if you really, really, really liked it, go over to my Twitter feed at 8 underscore 16 underscore 32 bit and... Let me know. Give me some form feedback and maybe even buy me a coffee. This is Learned Rob from 81632 Bit saying so long and I will see you next time.